Hi, I'm Jeremy Warner, and I'm an assistant professor of medicine and biomedical informatics at Vanderbilt University. And I'm going to be talking about a project called Smart Precision Cancer Medicine. So I like to start with a case to kind of, you know, place this in perspective. So I'm an oncologist, so I treat cancer patients. And this would be a typical patient that I might see in my office. So a uh, new diagnosis, woman walks through the door um, with a diagnosis of uh, stage four lung cancer, which is uh, fairly advanced lung cancer. In this case, this uh, woman was a never smoker and she's undergone some genetic testing, um, which has shown that she has a mutation in the KRAS gene, a G12C mutation. And so, you know, we stop right here and we say, what does this patient and what does her doctor want to know? Uh, what are they going to talk about for the next 45 minutes or an hour in that room? And there's a lot of details in this very short vignette. So I've highlighted a few right here. So, you know, all of these are factors that might influence this patient's treatment decisions, this patient's prognosis, um, as well as uh, predict for uh, new medicines that may or may not be effective for this patient or patients similar to her. So this is... Uh, a slide that says that uh, in this day and age, uh, cancer clinicians, oncologists are making decisions based on genotype, based on gene information. This is information that comes straight out of Vanderbilt's uh, medical record systems, where we're looking at patients like this patient or like a patient with an EGFR mutation, um, which is another commonly mutated gene in lung cancer, and what kind of medicines they're treated with. And what we find in this example is that uh, if a patient has an EGFR mutation, they are much more likely to uh, be offered or treated with a drug called erlotinib. And so this is just one example of uh, sort of the, the new precision medicine world of oncology. Um, however, there are other risk factors that matter a lot. Now, I mentioned that that patient was stage four, um, which by itself is a bad prognostic indicator, but I also talked about uh, that patient's tobacco exposure. In this case, that patient was a never smoker, and we can actually start to look at data from the Vanderbilt medical record again and see that that matters quite a bit as well. So patients who have never smoked uh, do quite a bit better in terms of survival than patients uh, who, who have. So that kind of information is really hard for uh, a clinician or a patient to keep in their head, especially when we're getting into uh, molecular profiles. So what we did uh, starting about a year and a half ago was start to develop an app that would live outside of the electronic medical record, but would actually gather information from the medical record, present it to clinicians and patients, and allow for clinicians uh, and patients to access what are called external knowledge bases. And I give three examples here, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a, in a few minutes. I'm just going to kind of run through what this app looks like. So this is a SMART app. SMART stands for Substitutable Medical Apps and Reusable Technologies. And this is an idea that was created uh, several years ago at Harvard University uh, Children's Hospital. You know, the idea being that uh, we have app stores, you know, for our uh, phones, uh, for our consumer electronics. Why can't we have an app store for our electronic medical records to do things that our EMRs can't do for us, either because those things are uh, sort of in low demand or the EMR is just not technologically advanced enough at this point in time. Um, and so why not have an app store? So this is a, an app that basically brings up uh, mutations uh, for a patient and uh, for a population of similar patients. So in this example, uh, I'm basically pulling up that patient that I just presented uh, with lung cancer with a KRAS mutation. And you can see on the left that uh, the KRAS gene was detected in that patient. And you can also get an idea of how many patients in this population have that gene mutation. On the right, you can see what the specific mutation uh, was, and in this case, it was called G12C. And you immediately see that that is the most common variant uh, seen in the lung cancer population. So behind the scenes, this app has figured out that this patient has lung cancer, because that's not always completely obvious, um, that it has also read in um, data pertaining to um, the gene and the mutation from the electronic medical record. So from here, uh, you might want to know more. Right? You might want to know not only a qualitative breakdown, but how many patients are we actually talking about. By pressing the pie chart, you would get to a blown up version. And here you're actually seeing um, how many patients belong to each category. In this case, at Vanderbilt, we have run these uh, genotyping tests on more than 1,000 lung cancer patients at this point. And you can see that 
<clears throat> at the time that this was uh, taken, 284 of those patients had a KRAS mutation. Now, you or your patient might want to know, what is KRAS? Tell me more about that. Um, and here, uh, when, you, when you touch that uh, piece of that pie, you actually get taken to GeneWiki, which is uh, part of Wikipedia, um, and has quite a bit of detail on what the KRAS gene is within the app. Okay, so let's go back to the main page here, and let's go to the other side of the pie. So here, again, you get enumerated uh, information. You can see that 142 of these patients have the G12C mutation. And here you can go to a different uh, knowledge base called My Cancer Genome, which was created here at Vanderbilt. And here uh, you have information on the gene, the mutation, and the cancer uh, condition. A lot of uh, information that is intended for clinicians. The site is also undergoing uh, revisions to be more patient-friendly, so in the future you could potentially have a uh, patient-centric version of this link. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, it's very simple to add further uh, things to this app. So, for example, let's add a treatment module. You might want to know, how are we going to treat this patient? And so here we can actually say, how are we going to treat this patient by their disease, in this case, lung cancer? And this would take you to another site called hemoc.org, and this would actually give you all the treatment regimens that are uh, currently available to treat non-small cell lung cancer. Going back, you might select the Treat by Gene button, and this would actually take you back to hemoc.org. And in this case, I'm showing you here a screenshot of BRAF inhibitors. I'm not showing you KRAS inhibitors because there are none at, the, you know, at this point in time. Uh, but if this gene mutated was BRAF, you could be taken to uh, this sort of page. And from here, go on to start looking into treatments for BRAF mutated cancers. So there are a lot of next steps for smart PCM or precision cancer medicine. Uh, that survival curve that I showed you early on uh, about smokers versus non-smokers, that's not yet part of this app, but certainly uh, future plans we would like to add both uh, survival by mutation as well as survival by other, uh, uh, other factors such as the smoking status. We'd like to enable interactive stratification so that the user can actually select uh, what factors they'd like to um, look at survival by. Uh, we get into problems with visualization when we start looking at large cancer mutation panels. Some of the modern cancer mutation panels are looking at 100 genes, 200, 500 genes. And the more genes you look at, the more mutations you're going to find. How are you going to show this information to users in a way that's usable? We're also interested in looking at tumor evolution over time. So basically what this is is that um, as a patient is treated, uh, perhaps by a targeted drug for a certain mutation, that drug will work for some period of time, but eventually that patient will develop a new mutation in their cancer and the cancer will escape uh, from that drug. And visualizing that over time uh, through the course of obtaining multiple biopsies is going to be really important for figuring out how to treat cancer patients in the future. And there are, of course, many other ideas. So I'd like to acknowledge the many, many folks who are involved in either the ideas behind this app or the actual programming of the app. Uh, those involved in the actual programming have little uh, red asterisks next to their name. Thank you.